In Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, the Millennium Falcon narrowly escapes Imperial TIE Fighters by bobbing and weaving through a perilous asteroid field. It's one of the most iconic scenes in film history. But how scientifically accurate was it? According to C-3PO, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1! Which, basic statistical problems aside, if that's true, it's terrible news for me. You see, I'm an ambassador for NASA's Lucy mission, as evidenced by this patch, these stickers, this paper model, and this swanky polo. Lucy will be the first ever mission to the Trojan Asteroids, a group of asteroids that lead and trail Jupiter as it orbits the Sun. Lucy will visit a total of seven asteroids, one in the main asteroid belt, and the rest in two separate Trojan swarms. In fact, while I was making this video, the Lucy team discovered another little baby asteroid orbiting one of the seven, meaning Lucy is actually visiting a total of eight different asteroids in three different asteroid groups. So if the odds of successfully navigating one asteroid group are approximately 3,720 to 1! What the heck makes us think we can successfully navigate three? Fortunately for us, C-3PO was wrong. The first thing we need to address is that real asteroid fields are not nearly as densely packed as Star Wars portrays them. Asteroids are generally millions of kilometers apart. In fact, if you were standing on one of the Trojan asteroids, you probably wouldn't even be able to see another asteroid with the naked eye, so shots like this, or this, or this, are pretty unrealistic. Also, according to Alan Stern, the principal investigator for NASA's New Horizons mission, the chance of running into one is almost vanishingly small, far less than one in one billion. And actually, that's an overestimate. His definition of asteroid in this case is something much more like a little rock, so the odds of hitting giant asteroids like we see in the movie are even less. Lucy is almost 50 feet wide, which is nearly twice the width of a TIE fighter. If we're confident that her colliding with anything is unlikely, the TIE fighter pilots should also have no problem. I mean, if Han really wanted to show that he was a good pilot, he would steer toward the asteroids, not avoid them, which I think technically makes us better pilots than Han Solo. <laughs> My conscience manifesting itself as Master Yoda, what are you doing here? Tell them about what we did correctly, you did not. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, you're so right, Yoda conscience. It completely slipped my mind. Well, for starters, there is one particular case where asteroids would be closer together than usual, and that's if they're a binary asteroid, which means two asteroids are orbiting each other. One of Lucy's targets is a binary pair called Patroclus and Menetius, which are only about 400 miles apart. In fact, if you were standing on one of these asteroids, the other would look to be about the size of Earth's moon, which is pretty close for an asteroid. Also, even though asteroids orbit the sun, their motions relative to each other are kind of willy-nilly, so the scene kind of got that right. And finally, the scene actually does a fair job of showing the geology of the asteroids. The craters on the asteroids in the movie are shown with raised peaks at the center, which is a real property of some craters on actual asteroids, such as Ceres. They form when an asteroid is impacted so hard that the surface begins to move away from the site of the collision. The rock then rebounds and forms a solid central peak, almost like what happens when a raindrop splashes into water. Also, Ceres has canyons, just like the big asteroid in the movie. I think if there's one takeaway here, it's that when it comes to asteroids, real science has the high ground. A little forced that was, hmm? You're right, uh, let me try again. When it comes to asteroids, science is our only hope. Oh, that was still pretty bad. How about, the video is over. I have spoken.